Boy, it's cold in here, and I'm Chef Michelle Bernstein, and I'm making those foods that are guaranteed to warm you up to Dan Soflo Taste. This is South Florida. It's where I live and work. I'm Chef Michelle Bernstein. South Florida is more than sun, sand, and sea. It's a lifestyle of fashion, sound, culture, and of course, food. Food with taste from all over the world. Join me as we celebrate the food of South Florida and the people who love it. Join me as we experience soap low taste. Welcome all, welcome to our kitchen here at JA World in Coconut Creek and welcome to SoFlo Taste. I'm Chef Michelle Bernstein. Now we here in SoFlo may not have the winters of say cold foot Alaska or North Pole, New York or even zero Montana, but we can still enjoy foods that are best eaten when it's cold outside. So today I thought it would be fun chilling with the winter's food. So let's get cooking. I thought the first thing we could do is a nice green juice. And we're not going super green here. We're going with some of my favorite flavors all combined in a juice. So I've given you an array of, for me, what are bright colors and flavors to give you a really nice balanced juice so that everybody could drink this juice. So I'm gonna go ahead and juice carrots. And by the way, you don't peel anything, okay? Just leave the peel on. Beets, celery, the one that most people like the least, but you'd never know was even in there. But it's so good, it aids in digestion, it's great for you. And a little piece of ginger. Of course, some apple, because this is really what makes it taste delicious for me. And a little trick that I actually learned was that if your stuff ever gets stuck in that juicer, just whoops, just throw uh, an ice cube or two in there. And somehow it helps push everything right along. So there we have it. Kind of a fun little start to the day. A really nice combination of everything that's available right now. Of course, I have my paper straw, everybody. Don't worry, I'm very eco-conscious. And so here you have it, a good mix. Let's taste that. Perfect, it's delicious. It's not too sweet at all. It has the tartness of the apple, barely any ginger. See, this is something I can get into, just wonderful. All right, moving on. One thing that's available right now in this season are Fuyu persimmons. So there are two types of persimmons that you'll usually see in South Florida. One is hard. It needs to be hard because that's the best way to eat it. And the other has to be pudding-like. So this is the Fuyu, which is the harder persimmon. You can find this at any good market and a lot of Asian markets, okay? And this is so good in salads, it's wonderful. So I literally just got the arugula the other day at a farmer's market over by Delaware Chicken Farm and Seafood Market, the one next door. I try to get wild arugula when I can. And this is a like four ingredient salad. It's one of my favorites and I actually used to make it at the restaurant. So take your Fuyu persimmon, don't core it, don't do anything to it. Take a, um, you know, I love my mandolins, my Japanese mandolin, or you can use a knife and just shave. And look how thin I'm getting this. It's becoming almost paper-like thin. That's actually two pieces in there. So really nice and thin shavings because this salad is truly made up of the persimmon. And I feel like persimmons are something we walk by a lot in the supermarket because a lot of us don't know what to do with them. But this is just such a great starting point to use a persimmon, which by the way is very, very readily available in this time of year. Okay, so I got a lot of shaved persimmon. We'll take some of this delicious arugula, which you wanna rinse and dry because it always has a little bit of sand. This is mainly a persimmon salad using a little bit of the arugula to kind of use as kind of a vehicle to hold it. Then I'm gonna add a little bit of some freshly um, shaved Parmesan cheese. This is Reggiano. Trust me, all these, this combination is just the best. It's delicious. This is one of the favorite salads I've ever served in a restaurant. Lemon vinaigrette. Juice, one, oil, four. So four to one, extra virgin oil to fresh lemon juice. That's all that's in here. A little bit of pepper, a little bit of kosher salt. Mix it up. 
and we've already used about five different vegetables that you could find right now in your markets to go out and, and buy them. Go get them. Your family is going to love this salad. It's just a wonderful starter and a great starter to our day here because I'll be making all kinds of fun things with whatever is the bounty available right now. Right on top. There you have it. Gorgeous shaved persimmon salad. We're starting out with our fresh juice. Come right back. I have so much more. I don't even know if I'll get through all of it. SoFlo Taste will return right after this. Turn up your heat because it's cold out there. Welcome back to SoFlo Taste and today I'm giving you some winter recipes. Broccoli Rob, something that I think a lot of people don't even know how to use, which is very, very much available right now and just beautiful. I mean, look how gorgeous this is. So this is kind of a distant cousin of the broccoli. People are afraid of it because it's a little bitter. So I'll give you a little trick. Cut off the tops about halfway through, blanch them in a little salted boiling water for only about 30 seconds and drain them. And you've already washed out about 80% of the bitterness of the broccoli raw. And this is what you get. It's this gorgeous vegetable. When sauteed crisp in olive oil, there's nothing quite as good to me out there in the world. It is my favorite vegetable to eat, as is with a little bit of garlic and chilies. So I've decided to make you a pasta with it. So I've, of course, you know me, I'm going a little bit further than that. Um, I decided to give you a little bit of squash because this is squash season. This is an acorn squash. You don't actually have to peel acorn squash. The peel is delicious. So we're gonna keep the peel on. I basically cut just a little chunk out of it. And then again, I'm gonna shave using a mandolin really nice and thin, but just so you know, you roast it hard enough and you can eat the peel of the squash without a problem. Plus it's got all kinds of really great fiber. And let's get cooking because I have my fusilli cooking. I have about probably four minutes left. I'm gonna use a little extra virgin oil on this because it's gonna be a very quick cook. I'll start with a little bit of minced garlic, just peeled minced garlic. If you want a bigger chunk, you can slice it, it's fine. And a little bit of red crushed chilies, or you can say pepperoncini. I'm gonna go ahead and season the garlic and the chilies so that everything I add into that will now have flavor. I'm gonna start out with the squash, just raw shaved squash with a peel on it. I truly feel like this is festejando, um, entertaining and enjoying the moment of the winter season at its best. Just sauteed a little bit. Then I'll add the broccoli rob to this, which I drained as much as I could. These are just some drained chickpeas, came from a can. You can add white beans if you'd rather. But to me, pasta and beans are just such a beautiful traditional Italian combination. And I'm gonna bring up the heat just a second. Now I decided not to bring any other liquids into this recipe other than a little bit of the pasta water from the pasta that's cooking. Okay, so you see how we have a little bit of color but not too much. Everything's really just getting there. I'm gonna add a little bit of this pasta water to it. And I know it's a little funky, but I thought with the chilies, a little sweet and a little tart might be a really beautiful balance. So I'm gonna add the tiniest bit of honey. I know it sounds a little weird, but I think this might be very delicious. The honey goes really well with the squash and the chilies and the garlic. So let's start introducing the pasta. Al dente cooked pasta. This took about eight minutes. And a little bit more olive oil for the top. Now I'll add a squeeze of a couple pieces of lemon. This is about, I would say I'm gonna add about a half of a lemon to this. And I brought some fresh parsley leaves, just some picked parsley right at the end. I'm gonna shut my heat off, bring it all together. 
And this is just a beautiful dish. You know, a lot of people seem to think that winter dishes need to be heavy, but we are in South Florida, so we always want to keep that beautiful balance, right? So and look how gorgeous this is. It's just those light, thin pieces of squash. I thought, you know, the perfect cheese on this should be something a little on the briny side because we have all these different flavors going on with the lemon and the chilies and the honey. So I think that a shaved or grated ricotta salata, which is a salted ricotta cheese, would be just perfect for this. So here is some grated ricotta salata right over the top. And there you go. Made it in real time. So this was like our seven minute pasta dish. It's beautiful, it's delicious. Come right back because I have something a little hearty and a little light coming up next. Calling all SoFlo bakers, WPLG and the Arsh Center are looking for the most delicious, creative, and uniquely named pie inspired by the hit musical Waitress, playing at the Arsh Center from February 26th through March 3rd. The winner will get Waitress opening night dinner and tickets for four and more. So log on to the local10.com's contest page to enter and for details. Good luck. Welcome back to SoFlo Taste and my winter food recipe show. So lastly, I don't know, I always think of pork in the winter, so I wanted to make you my favorite pork chops that I've been making lately. To go with it, a delicious slaw made of a lot of winter vegetables that we have around right now. So this is a kohlrabi. It is a vegetable used a lot in Asian recipes, and it can be pickled, it can be eaten raw, it can be cooked. I'm gonna be using it in the slaw. It's a really great crunchy vegetable, and it holds up really well. It's kind of like a chayote, but even more dense, if that's even possible. And then finally, um, celery root, which is always one of my favorites. Celery root can be used raw in slaws. So we're gonna make a slaw, and we're gonna make some pork chops. So these are some boneless pork chops from Delaware Chicken Farm and Seafood Market, DelawareChicken.com, and they're just gorgeous. And I didn't pound them, but we used a pounder to just slightly tenderize them just a little bit. They almost don't even need it. So these have been floured, egg washed, and this is panko breadcrumbs, Japanese breadcrumbs, to make it nice and crispy. And I'm gonna finish it with a little bit of compound butter, which I've given you the recipe before. All my recipes are always on soflotaste.com, but this one is just a little bit of garlic and parsley and butter. So we're gonna finish the pork with a little bit of this butter. So I'm gonna start cooking the pork and then we'll slide right into the slaw. So this is some grape seed oil. I'm gonna cook the whole thing all the way on the stove. I truly don't see the need to put a pork chop that's not a massive pork chop into the oven. All the cooking can just be done right here. So I have the flame on about a medium low. We're just gonna get it nice and crispy all the way around and keep working it. For all my great vegetables, the kohlrabi, you basically take a paring knife to it and you peel around it until you get to this very light colored interior. And we're gonna go ahead and cut that down, maybe in half, and then we'll cut that on a, I brought again a mandolin, I love Japanese mandolins, and this one I'm using uh, the teeth. So if you can see on the inside, it comes with these little, what I call teeth, to make julienne pieces. Let's not forget about our pork, just make sure we're flipping it every once in a while. And lower the heat a little bit more, to make sure we cook all the way through. All right, so, we want some nice julienne pieces of the kohlrabi, which you can do with a knife, or you can do it with a mandolin. So when you slice through like that, you get these great little thin pieces. But let me show you how to do it, just in case, with a knife. To get a julienne piece, you just wanna slide your knife through, have some nice thin slices like so. Let your knife do the work, not your hand. I always tell people that. If you're pushing too hard, you're not using your blade enough. You're using your hand too much. And then you layer all those pieces up into nice stacks. 
And then you go ahead and you julienne those like that. So then you have these nice little thin slices that are perfect for any kind of a slaw. So I'm going to put that into my bowl. I also thought some grated carrots would be delicious. So those are just done on a box grater. Put some of those in there. All right, so for the celery root, you can do the same thing. You can use the mandolin if you want to, or you can use a knife. So it comes out like so. Nice julienne pieces. All the scraps can be used in soups and in stocks and in all kinds of stuff. So for the dressing, I have a little bit of a sriracha. I think it's uh, America's favorite ketchup at the moment. So a little bit of sriracha. This stuff rocks. It's called sweet chili sauce. It's Thai. It's so good. Put a little bit of this on like a steak or a fried fish. It's delicious. Um, so this is our sweet element. It does have chilies in it, okay, so beware. But it's not that spicy. A little bit of rice wine vinegar is our acid. And then a little bit of sesame oil is the fat. So go ahead and make that mix. Make sure you taste it before you toss in all those vegetables that you worked hard on cutting. Add a little bit of salt to it. I think I'm good. All right, let's check our pork chop. And we are absolutely almost there. So to make the slaw, go ahead and get some it's actually mixed parsley and cilantro. Just basically take it to a knife for just a second. Add a little freshness in that. I've got some sliced up scallions as well and then all these great vegetables. So let's mix everything together. Like that. Finally, a little bit of grated ginger and microplane the ginger right over it. And then you could do one of two things. You could dump all this in there or that in there. I'm more likely a little more gentle with my slaw sauce. So add what you think would be enough and mix. So you have all these great winter vegetables all mixed in here, done a little bit of a, in a lighter way with an Asian kind of flavor to it. Delicious. So our pork chops are cooked through. What you're going to want to do now to finish them, you're going to take a little bit of the oil, almost all of the oil out. So take a little pot or a little bowl nearby. Let's go ahead and pour the oil out of it. Put it back on the flame. Shut the heat off and add your compound butter right into it. And like I said, this butter is butter with garlic and parsley. A little lemon zest is in there as well. Go ahead and shake the pork into the compound butter, making sure you cover both sides of it with the compound butter. So they sell compound butter also at Delaware. So if you don't feel like making your own compound butter, you can absolutely buy it at Delaware Chicken Farm and Seafood Market. But you see how we're just kind of letting all of that soak into the pork. I haven't seasoned it yet. This is the first time I'll season it with a little bit of salt, but I don't think it needs much. And just keep spooning a bit of that butter right over that pork. But remember, make sure that it, it is cooked when you start this method. And there you have it. So let's put all this together. So we've got our pork chops. like so. Take a little bit of the residual compound butter right over the top. And then right next to it, go ahead and put a nice serving of your slaw. And then you have like this French Asian kind of flavors going on with the compound butter and with this Asian slaw. And we're celebrating the winter season here on SoFlo. Come right back. Mm -hmm. 
I hope that those winter foods warm the cockles of your heart and every other part of you. Try these recipes the next time the Soflo thermometer drops below 60. However, these recipes are good at any temperature. Now next week is our kickoff to the big game show with food to make your big game watching even better. Whether you're cheering for the Patriots or the Rams, it makes no difference because by the end of this game, you'll be a fan of the food, so join me. Now let's check in with design expert Martin Amado. Good morning, Martin. Hi, Michelle. When you dream of beachfront living, you think of South Florida, right? Coming up on SoFlo Home Project, the Brito Charette design team made their clients' wishes a reality by designing the luxury vacation home they always wanted. Thanks, Martin. From what I saw over your shoulder, it looked fabulous. So Taste Buds, have a great week, and I'll see you here next week for food, football, and fun. Goodbye and good taste. Just chillin'.